this idea of situational fluency is so challenging to overcome the preparation that you've put in and I would say your own desired outcomes. Because I think so many people get caught up and I'm really speaking from say this sales background where they have a meeting, they have an agenda, they've done their homework, they've prepared, they have all these questions and they feel, okay, I got to get through all these questions. And they're just missing so many things because they're not adapting either to what the person is saying or a lot of times what the person is not saying. So they're not really changing based on the cues they're getting back because they're so locked into, I have all these questions, I need to find these things out so I can come up with a proposal or whatever it may be. Yeah, so so you, you bring up a good point because it's one thing for you and I to have this high lofty and, and vehemently agree with this mushy term. And yet I'm compelled as someone who does this for a living to give you a prescription on how to do that. Mm -hmm. So for example, one of the things that you have to learn how to do is this idea of calibration, right? So you're in the room. The first thing you need to do is calibrate. Now, what does calibrate mean? You got to take a look. You got to notice. You got to see who's doing what. And I teach because um, I'm a master practitioner in neurolinguistic programming. And I teach people cues as to how you can elicit people's what's called representational system, their modalities, how they best do it. And, you're, and, and, and when you get good at it, you know, you just kind of do it within seconds. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean to make it right. You now have something to test. And then you fire off an assertion, a question, whatever. And here's the idea. Don't just listen for what is repeated but try to calibrate the, the, the idea that of, of how they interpret your assertion. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing, Scott, I, I, I think everyone knows this, but it's, well, um, it's interesting to put on the table is the meaning of any assertion is placed or derived or interpreted from the recipient, not the communicator. Mm -hmm. So I can say something like, you know, it's hot in Denver. Well, you have you as the recipient have all sorts of idea what hot means, right? And you could say something like, "Well, wow, you you know you you probably have the air conditioner on." Well, no, I don't. It's like, it's like no, because it's only eighty. Well, that's eighty is pretty hot. Not for me, man. That's kind of chilly, right? So that's think of that as a very rudimentary example. But imagine the the context and the detail and. And, and some of the nuance right, that comes from these sort of mushy words that we intend up using. Mm -hmm. So I, I think with the calibration, I love what you said about just because you've done, you've gone through and learned these skills and you practice it and you, you go in and you calibrate based on what you're seeing around you, whatever it may be, it doesn't mean it's 100% true. And I remember when we first connected, you were talking about just like the background, the picture and how my office is set up. You were able to put out some things and you made some statements. And based on my response, you kind of, I probably recalibrated a little bit how to best exactly. engage yeah. with me. So it is important that as you're going into these meetings and you're using these skills, don't just take them as uh, at a hundred percent. You're going to have to try and test them out, recalibrate a little bit. 